You heard it before. The latest now on a Wayne State University police officer shot at Detroit. He's clinging to life. The police believe they have the guy who shot him, but it is the fifth officer shot just since Sunday. Detroit Chief of Police James Craig with us now. Chief, thank you for joining us. What can you tell You're us? You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah, it's a somber day in Detroit. As you know, uh, this is the third officer that's been critically uh, wounded. We had two officers fatally shot uh, within the last 45 days. So some very troubling times, and certainly now we have an officer fighting for his life. Uh, we have the person we believe, the right person, certainly in custody. Uh, but this has touched so many of our officers, both in Detroit and the Wayne State Police Department. It must end. It absolutely must end. Was he targeted, Chief? Uh, and was it racial? What, what do we know? Well, we're not certain that he was targeted. We do know that the suspect had a history of uh, being non-cooperative with local police. Uh, we don't know what, a, what would have fueled this. Uh, so we're not at a place now that we can say he definitely was targeted. But, you know, if you just look at the shootings across America, if, you know, I took a look at the last week. 28 incidents, either an officer-involved shooting or officers attacked. And we talk about the number of officers that are fatally wounded. That only gives us a small picture of what's really going on. And what's fueling it? I'll tell you, it's the anti-police rhetoric. It's empowering these individuals to feel that they can attack police and that go without any type of uh, sanction. We're reporting. I mean, what's interesting, Jeff, is when we see incidents like this, and I say five in less than a week, um, if any one of these had involved a, a shooting of an individual, uh, not a police officer, but by a police officer, it would be wall-to-wall -wall coverage. It would be wall-to-wall -wall coverage, and yes, the media does play a role in it. And yes, the protesters. We had a, a situation, I said, like 30 days ago, an officer going out serving the community. He was shot by a suspect. Uh, certainly, it was an outpouring of support from Detroiters, uh, but there were no protests. And I wonder if the tables had turned that that officer had shot that suspect uh, we would, we'd still be dealing with issues. You know, uh, Chief, I talked to a, a couple of policemen here, not too far around the corner from me here, getting ready for beefed up security ahead of Thanksgiving and the, and the Macy's Day Parade. And one of them had said something interesting, and I've heard stories like this before, that they almost, almost are compelled to pull their punches uh, for fear that they'll either be dragged to court or video, whatever they're doing, even if it's nothing bad. Uh, will ruin their career and ruin them, period. What do you make of that? You know, it's troubling. You know, the one incident that comes to mind, and I know you're aware of it, uh, the female officer out of Chicago right. that was beaten within an inch of her life, and she said, I feared pulling my gun and using it because I didn't want the scrutiny to myself, my family, my department. I had a conversation with... Uh, a group of canine officers today who worked very closely with this Wayne State officer who are, who are really grieving over this situation, uh, and they brought the same issue up. They said, look, we don't want to have any issues. We don't want to bring any embarrassment to the department. I said, look, first and foremost, you get to go home to your families. Uh, we are a constitutional police department, and we expect you to use that force that's reasonable and necessary. And if faced with an imminent threat, you have the absolute right to use deadly force. And so we support our officers here. I make it known, uh, I, I, unwavering support. And when those who, who engage in criminal misconduct, we're not afraid to take action. Uh, but we need the support. It's one thing for police chiefs. We need the support of our elected leadership to start talking out in one unified voice that these attacks on police officers are not warranted. It just shouldn't happen. But. I hear crickets in most cases. Yeah, I, I'm wondering, you know, Donald Trump has promised throughout the campaign and now president-elect to stand by police, but what can a president, any president, do uh, besides going before the bully pulpit and stating what you just stated? You just have to speak in one united voice, a bold voice, and say that police officers, any attack on a police officer is attack on each and every one of us. You know what's interesting? So we talk about the Wayne State officer. This is an individual who served that, that college community with distinction, but yet the students most likely will protest, want to block freeways, although they haven't done that here in Detroit. But I wonder, because this guy was such a good friend and a, a, a person of integrity in that community, are there going to be any protests to support uh, this egregious act? 
Yeah, I wouldn't hold my breath, Chief. All of 29 years old, we wish him well, we pray. But uh, Chief uh, James Craig, thank you very, very much. Thank you so much. I appreciate your time.